Okay, so I don't have much super insightful to say, but I'll summarize some of the stuff in the in the in the two books that's relevant. So a little bit of review. So remember that um, morphisms between formal group laws are power series in one variable. So let's just write it. The sum x to the i. So we'll call such a power series a strict isomorphism. If uh, basically if its first term is x. So if a0 is 0. zero and A1 is one. Um, okay, so these, this was the notion of strict isomorphism between formal group laws. Um, a, an ordinary isomorphism would just um, replace this condition with A1 being a unit in the ring. Okay, so we're gonna let gamma R be the group of strict isomorphisms under composition, so like functional composition. And this group acts on the formal group laws over R by, um, well, we can take a formal group law and apply gamma to each variable and then apply it on the outside. I forget if the inverse goes here or on the inside, but it doesn't really matter. It's just right or left. Um, okay, so a special case is We'll just call gamma without a subscript for like, r equals the integers. And then uh, gamma also acts on the Lazard ring. So let's, uh, sorry. So let's see, how does, that, how does that work? So let g be the universal form of Hoopla, l then we can use the same formula applied to G. And this is another formal group law over L. But since um, L classifies formal group laws, this is induced by a map, which we'll call phi gamma from L to L. So that's the action of gamma on L. So um, this action is via like phi gamma. I'll just write it like that. Okay. Um, so remember L is also the coefficients of mu. So we have this action by gamma on the coefficients of mu. Gamma also acts on mu of a space. So that's more complicated, but we also have, so just, if you, if this is sounding familiar, this is a little bit of review from last time, but just for context. So we also have gamma acting on MU space. Um, and this action is compatible with the action with like the MU star module structure. So we have an action like that an action like this, and these are compatible. So what that means is that gamma lambda x, let's say, is uh, gamma lambda gamma x. Okay. So mu star of x, we want to look at it in a category that takes this data into account, which is a little bit richer. So um, Remember we had this category, which was the homotopy category of finite CW complexes. And then we have this category C gamma, which is the category of finitely presented graded L modules with a gamma action that respects the L module structure. So that's exactly the types of things that this is. So MU 
is a functor like this, tilde, technically, it's fine. And then um, there was this thick subcategory theorem. So if you look at a prime, uh, so on the top and bottom, both things mean P local, just on, in one case, it's a P local CW complex. In the other case, it's um, modules. And then um, this is filtered by the thick subcategories. So we have F8, uh, we'll just call these F, um, P0, F1, Fpn. And similarly here, So just remember, these are the thick subcategories. And MU preserves these thick subcategories. Um, that'll be pretty direct if we recall what the definitions of these categories are. So let's remember FPN. These are the P-local complexes. Um, um, with the property that, you know, it's defined in terms of MU anyway. So it's sort of direct that MU sends these thick subcategories to each other. The interesting thing is that these are all the thick subcategories, which says that MU shows that, you know, these categories are pretty similar. Um, and then CPM is similar. Um, okay, so basically, this says that, you know, to study these categories, we can study these thick subcategories. And Morava's orbit picture which is, I guess what Ravenel calls this is basically do this idea, but for formal group laws. So Remember that the formal group laws on a ring, these are classified by maps, ring homomorphisms. I think the video actually is kind of Sorry? I don't know if it's your network or the video actually stopped me. Oh, interesting. Oh, it might be a phone. Oh, can you? What, what, um, yeah, okay, this is reconnection. Let's see. My phone's like the internet or something. Yeah. Oh, phone. it looks like it's connected again. Um, we just tried turning on this guy's video. Uh, oh, it's still connecting. Let me try yeah, his Wi-Fi. We'll give this a second and then I'll see what happens. Okay, it's good again. Let's just switch the video. Oh. It was right the first time. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, formal group laws over R are maps from the Lazarding into R. And remember, just like over there, um, gamma R acts on this. So let's. Uh, do an example first, if we take the integers, then uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's say some of the things we can say about this action. So the, the idea is to do something similar to the thick subcategory theorem, but using this action on formal group laws to split things up. Quick question. Yeah. So M is has a gamma action too. 
it's a module with an action node. It's a gamma representation. So this category is the category of, you know, L modules with a gamma action that respect the L module structure. So yeah, the gamma action comes into in, into play for the whole category, and then the thick subcategories are defined by like what happens to the when you when you multiply by these generators of L. Okay, so for like finding the thick subcategories, like you don't care about the gamma action, like you just like. That's my understanding. Yeah. yeah the gamma action is essentially in the product, an inclusion of the Ultimately, it doesn't uh, change. The categories are just factors out some alpha variance. It's nice and for you. Yeah. A little bit less than that. No, I was just under the impression that you had to take like M star and you go modules. Like, you have this. Ah, see, that, so that's the thing. Uh, that is what we're looking at there. You're looking at modules essentially over this top alpha source. Uh, but the M star of U, uh, that, like the morphisms in there are the things that correspond to gamma. But gamma is too small, right? It's just like dx on one. Like, you're not allowing A. Like, you're usually like when you do this, you just take the Z adjoint A1, A2, and so on, right? Here we are just taking dx. Well, gamma is. is It's a universal, it's the walk, it, it consists of all isomorphisms of the universal formal group law. So I'm not understanding why, why you would expect gamma to show up in the definition of thick subcategories, because the thick subcategories depend on P and N. So where yeah, would- but I guess I was expecting gamma to be bigger, not just ZX. Like I was hoping for it to be like ZA1, A2, AN, like the all, basically classifying mm -hmm. all the, Isomorphisms, strict isomorphisms. So gamma is the strict isomorphisms, but for formal group laws over Z. Yeah, I was thinking it would be over the Lazard ring. That yeah, that's interesting actually. I yeah, um, good question. Right? Why 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 do you just need Z here? Because if you want to. Look at L as a representing object or a representing object, but these A's are not going to be part of that because they're elements of the Lazard ring, not which is not universal, uh, or it's universal. What I'm trying to say is if you want to say a generic strict isomorphism of formal group laws, there cannot be any A's in that because that's something specific to the Lazard ring. So, like, we're looking at an isomorphism of formal group laws which doesn't. But keeps the base fixed, essentially. So it leaves L fixed. It only changes the formal group law. Yeah, I don't I don't know why. I think that's yeah, I don't know. It's interesting though. Okay. Maybe we can just say uh go forward. Maybe we can talk about this later. But Okay, so let's study the action of gamma on the formal group laws over Z first. So if we have two formal group laws, they're in the same gamma orbit, if and only if they're strictly isomorphic. So, so. Uh. That's pretty clear. Gamma are the strict isomorphisms. Um, we fix a formal group law. Oops. Uh, we can look at the automorphism group. So, or we can look at the, the stabilizer group of F. So maybe, right, the stabilizer group of F. This is the strict automorphism group of F. So I'll write ought. And then 
if you take two isomorphic, strictly isomorphic formal group laws, then their stabilizer groups are conjugate in gamma. So I'll say uh, ought sec f is conjugate to ought um, when f is strictly isomorphic to g. Conjugate to this in, in gamma. Okay. So you might hope that this gamma action makes it easy to classify formal group laws over Z, but that problem is hard. But over a finite field, it's, it's easier. So these same things hold over a finite field, but let's go to that case. So let's let K, well, the algebraic closure of a finite field, so uh, P to the N. Then we similarly have an action like this. And since formal group laws over K are classified by their height, these gamma K orbits are just the heights of formal group laws. Okay, and let's do this in a bit more detail. So fix a formal group law, but now I'm gonna use different notation for the formal group law and the classifying map. So I'm gonna use uh, theta to refer to that because we want to say what it means to have height n. So f has height n, if and only if, if you take theta and apply it to one of these generators of the Lazard ring, then it's uh, zero for i less than n and not zero for i equals n. I'll just write it like that. Okay. So this is looking somewhat like these thick subcategories that I'm erasing now. We'll just make it look a little bit more like that and then I'll go forward. So let yn be the height n orbit. So these are the, yeah. Then we can uh, take Xn to be the, like all of the height i orbits above, above n. So yi for i greater than or equal to n. We get then, this gives us a filtration on all the formal group laws. And this is like the analog of the thick subcategory theorem, basically. Okay. Now just a comment is there's a representative of this uh, height and orbit that's often called the Honda formal group law. I think there's like the Honda formal group law refers to different things, but for us. Always called it the so-called Honda formal group law. Sure. Invented. Well, I also think that like um, people in different papers use slightly different representatives in here and call it the Honda formal group law. But if you just fix a representative in here, I think it's fair to just call it Honda formal group law. So we're gonna, for us, it's gonna be very simple. So it's gonna be a formal group law over, um, um, FP, sorry, FP to the N. Well, maybe let's, let's just describe it in terms of a map from the Lazard ring. So you just have to say where the generators go. So VN goes to one and the others 
go to zero. Okay, simple. Um, this is also the formal group law of Morava K theory, Morava of Kn. Okay, let's go on to the Morava stabilizer groups. So we've kind of already met these, but let's just name them. So what Ravenel calls Sn is the strict automorphism group of this Fn. So this is like a an example of something we saw over there. Um, this is, as we know, the stabilizer of Fn in gamma k. Okay, now. Based on reading more modern sources, I don't think this is what everyone calls the Morava stabilizer group. Not even that. I'm going to get to that. Um, so I'm going to call this one the strict Morava stabilizer group. I'm going to denote an S. Maybe I'm wrong about this, but I like I thought about this for a little bit, and it seems like the modern sources define something different, which I'm going to call um f for full and this is the full automorphism group of fn which is also the stabilizer under a group action but under a different group action so if you take gamma tilde k to be like the all the non-strict isomor automorphisms or non-strict isomorphisms then it's that stabilizer and yeah this is maybe i'm wrong about this but i it, yeah, I think that everybody calls this one the small Morava stabilizer group. Um, okay, so the the unsuperscripted one we're gonna we're gonna use for Ravenel's because we're following that book. Um, there is another group which. So you're talking about Fn. I think it's F P to the N. Yeah, it's F P to the N because it's in here. Yeah, the only difference is strict versus non-strict. Yeah. So now because of this complication, Ravenel makes statements and other sources make statements, and I don't know if like most statements are just the same for both of these, or if there's like a standard adjustment you have to make. I don't know the answer to that, but because of how few people address it. The the yeah, I, I, I think they're similar. I'm just wondering like, if you make statements about one, what do you have to change to get the right statement about the other? Is it nothing or is it like a little bit? So I don't know the answer to that, but because we're following the orange book, I'm just gonna use this one. Okay, um, so this is sits inside of here. And then just because there's another group that you'll see called the Morava stabilizer group, I'm just gonna write that one down too. This one uses a G. Um, so this one takes the full small Morava stabilizer group and it has an action by the Galois group of this extension of F G to the N over FP. And you take the semi-direct product by that. This is called the big Morava stabilizer group. And um, just to write down why you might care about this one, well, this statement was proved after Ravenel's book, but we'll get it later. We'll come to it later. Um, Ravenel's Hopkins which says that the KN local sphere, um, you can describe it in terms of these GNs. So I'm not gonna say what this means. I'm just gonna say that this GN gives you a formula for the KN local sphere, and that is a topic of a later talk. Okay. We'll talk about the Morava stable do you think the big one? Okay. I, yeah. I don't know. 
Right. Which I think is from 2004. So. OK. So let's try to describe SM. So remember that um, if you want to construct the p-adic integers, one way to do it is to start with fp, and then you do a construction on the integers. Um, you can generalize this construction. You have to do it differently to these uh, non-prime fields. Um, and the resulting thing is are called wit vectors, uh, denoted like this. I'm not going to talk about the construction, but the basic thing is that uh, it generalizes this construction. So this is W F. Okay. Let me just get. So. Um, a fact about this is just like uh, FPN is a degree N extension of FP. This is a degree N extension of the p adic integers. So, okay. So the Frobenius map it lifts to it lifts to these width vectors. I'm just going to write it like this. Um, and it has the form that if you plug in x, you get x to the p mod p. OK, so we're going to use this map to define an algebra that the Morava stabilizer group lives inside of. Comment I feel compelled to make mm -hmm. that is kind of important is that this extension of ZP specifically it is a unramified extension of ZP. It's, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't know like how much to to write to say whatever. Yes. Okay. Um, now, Ravenel uses EN for this uh, algebra. But what we're, we're going to do is we're going to take this these width vectors and adjoin a non-commuting variable s. And you're not going to forget that it's not commuting because one of the relations we're going to impose is that instead of commuting, you apply the Frobenius. And the other relation is that s uh, is an n through to p. OK, so. Um, some other sources use other notation. I think EN conflicts with a lot of notation in this area, but it's OK. Um, so let's describe this in terms of elements. You can describe these things as polynomials in the S's um, of maximum degree n minus 1, right? because the n, through, the n power of S is p. But there's a more convenient expression of elements. Here you have to, sorry, zero. Here you have to take an infinite sum, but you can take your coefficients to be more special. So you can take these EIs, um, their p to the nth power. I don't know, what do you call this? p to the n idempotent or something? I don't know, does it have a name? But what? The order dividing p to the n minus one. Zero, yeah, know. exactly. This includes the zero case. Yeah. Um, which you need to include to get this expression. Um, OK, so in terms of this description, we'll be able to describe the, the strict Morava stabilizer group. OK, so. First, independent of the description, we can take the units, and this is the full Morava stabilizer group. So okay. 
But we can, inside here, we can take the special ones that have basically the same thing that is the difference between um, strict and non-strict isomorphism formal group laws. So the units here are specifically the things of this form where EI for E0 is not zero, i.e. it's a unit. So here we just take the ones where EI is one. Yeah. And this is the strict model stabilizer group. Okay. So we have a, an algebra that's nice. There's like Daron was saying, there's a lot of uh, ways you can describe properties of this algebra. It also sits inside of an extension of the piadic numbers, um, like a nice extension also. So, so we, yeah. Whenever you have groups sitting inside of algebras, it's like, makes it nice to study like the spin group and the Clifford algebras is my favorite, but okay. I guess to, to follow up and give a better answer to what is the E I the E that equals E I thing mean, that these are the fixed points of the nth power of the Frobenius and that one could describe this formally as E I being in F P D F with some unconventional addition. Yeah. Okay. Now, we talked a lot about these Morava stabilizer groups and the orbit picture and how they help classify formal group laws. Let's go back to talking about these cohomology theories and how this, how this stuff relates to that. So, so the Morava stabilizer group, one relationship it has is to the hop algebra of Kn. Uh, okay. okay, so I don't remember if this was said last time because I wasn't here, but the hop algebra, the, the ring, underlying ring of the hop algebra of Kn um, has a factor of this algebra called sigma n and the other factors in exterior algebra. And sigma n can be written by basically taking the hop algebra of BP and sort of uh, tensoring with the coefficients of Kn on both sides. So you're like, oops, you take BP star BP, and then you tensor over BP Kn. Um, and then also on this side, you tensor over BP. Okay. This algebra is called the Morava stabilizer algebra. We'll see why, because it's related. Stabilizer. Okay. So. What's the relationship? Um, well, uh, first of all, we can write it in a different form. So this also can be written in terms of the coefficients, of polynomials and the coefficients of Kn modulo relation, well, a bunch of relations. And using this expression, we can link it back up to the Morava stabilizer groups. So let's use, um, using this expression, this one of the Morava stabilizer group, we can look at each of the EIs as a function on the group. Uh, as it's actually a continuous function because this is a profinite group. So if we look at all continuous functions on SN with the EIs being our prototypes, so we're gonna call SN the ring of continuous functions on SN. Ravenel says that they're F P to the n valued, but um, I don't know why, um, because it looks like they're valued in these width vectors. 
So I don't know if anyone has an answer, but maybe we can ignore this point if not. Um, what what the values of the continuous function are? Oh, you can like choose them to be an FPN. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, so if we take this ring, which is like kind of like related to a dual thing to this of the of the group ring of that, um, then this SN has an expression, also an explicit expression is polynomials in the, e, in the E's, uh, modulo the same relation. And you can show that this also has a factor of sigma n. So you're basically changing these coefficients to fp to the n, right? That's what you have to do. Um, so basically, this Morava stabilizer algebra is basically like a factor of the Morava stabilizer groups and also a factor of the top algebra of Kn. OK, so this is saying that the Morava stabilizer group is related to cohomology operations. Let's just say more precisely what cohomology operations they actually are instead of saying this complicated stuff about factors. So um, so remember that gamma was related to multiplicative operations on and you. It's not precisely all them, but it's related. So the SN have a similar relationship to the multiplicative operations of KN. So in precisely, you change KN to a different cohomology theory by taking KN. So take KN of a space, and you change the coefficients to FPN. Um, so it's like exactly what you're doing over there. Um, then SN is the group of multiplicative operations of this theory. Okay. So, but so this is similar to the situation with gamma, but it's a little bit better. Because in for MU, the entire um, hop algebra, MU star, MU, cannot be recovered by just knowing gamma. But the KN star KN can be recovered by just knowing SN. So even though SN is not all of the cohomology operations, um, it controls all of the cohomology operations, which is sort of why these get one of the reasons he's got a lot of attention. Um, okay. Sorry, one quick question. Yeah. So if, uh, for that one, when you took the ring of continuous functions on SN, yeah. if I had uh, taken like SNs which are not necessarily spread, like you, so you define two SNs, right? One was the, string, yeah. the small one, which is like between this one, and then there was the other one with the string. So for the string, would it just be like, uh, Sorry, now this is the correct one. Yeah. The non correct one, would you just have another extra generator zero if that hit, or how many? It's a good question. I don't know. Since yeah, I don't know the stuff well enough to be able to like compare the sources. And it's hard to, it's hard to find every statement you want in every source. So I you also have an answer to the L of the FPN FP uh so No, no, I don't mean GN. I just mean SN. With oh, 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 yeah, yeah, the non strict. Extra E0 term. Yeah. Would that just be an extra zero? Yeah. I'm sure people know the answer to this. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. The whole stuff is like the full version of strict. Larry talks about it. So. Oh, nice. Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. So, um, MU star MU 
is not directly in terms of gamma, Kn star Kn can be constructed from Sn, but now let's actually say how we can use that and apply it to Mu. So there's a relationship between the Adams Novikov spectral sequences. So I'm not going to have anything in here. Whatever, I'll use two lines. So remember that for BP, the E2 term of the spectral sequence is in terms of an X group. So this is not exactly that one, but it's related. You know, we're just doing something to BP. We have to, because BP doesn't depend on N and these kinds do. Um, and we can express this in terms of Morava K theories and the Morava stabilizer algebra. So now we take an X over the Morava stabilizer algebra of Kn star, Kn star. Okay, so this is like, we're sort of splitting up the, the Adams Novikov spectral sequence even more into these Ns. And that's, and we know that these, these groups control what's going on here. Okay. All right, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, the group cohomology because that's related to these X things. So it's useful to know a little bit about it. So first we mentioned before that SN is a profinite group. So when I say, when I use the cohomology notation, it means that it means continuous cohomology. And it's going to be um, mod p, it's going to be a coefficient. So, you know, say some things. First, the cohomology of Sn is finitely generated. Okay, um, when p minus one is not a factor of is not a factor of n, there's a Poincaré duality um, property. So let's say what this is, HI of SN is zero for N I greater than N squared. So the N squared is the top dimension. And then we have relative to N squared, we have Poincaré duality. So HN squared minus I otherwise. Okay. Um, what happens when P minus one is a factor of N, then it's basically a free module um, over generator some even degree. So let me just say this more precisely. So there's some class and some even degree um, such that the entire homology is free um, over polynomials in X. Okay, I um, wanted to say one more property, um, which basically says that, so this is a topological group. If you look at the small enough open subgroups, then they're simple, basically. So if we take a subgroup of Sn that's open, then the cohomology of U is just the cohomology of uh, n squared which is an exterior algebra on n squared generators. Okay. Now, just one last theorem unrelated to, or maybe related, I don't know, to group cohomology is just Ravenel says we're gonna use this in the future. So it's about the subgroups of SN. So all finite subgroups are actually cyclic. And 
the other statement to say, okay, so we know the finite subgroups are cyclic. What are the orders of the subgroups? Well, we can say something. Sn has an element of order um, p to the i plus one, if and only if p minus one p to the i is a factor of n. So we know that the finite subgroups are cyclic, and this tells us which cyclic subgroups there are, depending on n. Okay, that's where that's what I had to say. Questions? I don't know if I'll be able to answer them, but. Okay. So are you also yeah. saying there, like, so when you say cohomology, you is just cohomology of ZP and square? Is the claim also that U is isomorphic to ZP and square? I 